All right, here's solutions number 31 off the GRE subject math practice test. Uh, we're given a matrix and asked to find eigenvalues. So a quick refresher on eigenvalues. Eigenvalues are constants that satisfy this equation. Uh, so the V in this equation is what's called an eigenvector, and the T is the matrix, and lambda is the constant. And what I'm looking for is some con So really what's going on here is you have a matrix. And the question is, is there some sort of vector, non-zero vector, that you can apply this matrix to that will really just end up being a scaling of that vector. It'll almost leave the vector unchanged. It might stretch it out a little bit by some amount. That amount would be lambda right here. So what this problem is asking me to do is find lambda. Lambda is the eigenvalues. V would be the eigenvectors. And the way you do that is really it's not this equation you're solving. It's more this equation, which you can factor to get something. This is a bit of shorthand, but hopefully we'll let it slide to get here. You're like, whoa, matrix minus a constant, how's that work? Well, really, it's a uh, constant times the identity matrix is what's going on here. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm saying that I want a matrix, not really this matrix, but really the matrix I want to consider is this matrix minus lambda, or minus lambda times the identity matrix. So remember, the identity matrix has zeros in all entries except for ones on the diagonal. Uh, so if I fill out all these entries, I end up with something that looks like this. And so really what I'm looking for are values of lambda so that there are non-trivial solutions to the homogeneous um, matrix represented by this guy. So what I'm saying is I'm going to multiply this guy by some vector, x, y, z. You can think about it like that. And I want to get 0, 0, 0 as my answer. Um, and that Vector x, y, z can't all just be zeros. It has to be a non-trivial uh, vector. And so how do you figure that out? Well, there's a few different ways to do it. Um, one thing, there's maybe these are all equivalent. Equivalent are uh, if the determinant equals zero, that's equivalent to uh, non-zero solutions to the homogeneous, to the to exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and that's equivalent to having a free variable. So what I'm saying is really what I want to figure out is this guy. Figure out uh, a vector that's a non-zero vector that's a solution to the homogeneity, which just means that you're tacking on zeros at the end here, essentially. This thing equals zero. And the easiest way to figure that out is by using one of these two options. If this problem just said find the eigenvalues and then gave you five different options perhaps, you might want to use this first option, figure out the determinant of this guy. If you can figure out, if you can make this matrix a determinant, uh, if you can make this matrix have a determinant of zero, then what that means is there are non-zero solutions to the homogeneous, and then it satisfies what you need here. Uh, so if you can pick a value for lambda in here that'll make the determinant equal zero, we're done. So typically the way you solve these is you figure out what the determinant is. And maybe you remember that the way you figure out the determinant is you pick any row or column. So I don't know. I guess they're all about the same difficulty here. Maybe I'll pick uh, this column. And then you take each entry, so the 3 minus lambda, for example, and then sort of cross out everything in its row and column. And then I'm going to multiply that by the determinant of... 7 minus lambda, 2, 3, 8 minus lambda. Uh, and then from that, I'm going to subtract. My sign kind of alternates. Um, this will be plus, minus, plus because it's in the first column. So I'll subtract one of these. And now this row is gone and this column's gone. So what I have left are the 5 and the 3 up top and the 2 and the 8 minus lambda on the bottom. And then plus one now, plus, because I'm in this third entry here and I've alternated signs in this first column, one because of this one. And I want the determinant of this we're gone and this we're gone. I'd have a five, a three, a seven minus lambda, and a three. And so now I have these two by two matrices that are a lot easier to determine the uh, determinant of. You can kind of go through those same steps or you can just multiply two of these guys and subtract this product here. So you can do all that, but it'll turn into this algebraic mess this would be kind of a long way to get to your answer. I only mention it because generally speaking, when you're trying to find eigenvalues of a matrix, uh, this is kind of the standard method for going about it.
Uh, but in this case, I don't think they want you solving it this way. And the reason I say that is because it doesn't just list a whole bunch of different eigenvalues. They give you three possibilities and kind of ask you which ones work. That to me implies it kind of wants me to test each of these three different values. And so all I got to do is rewrite my matrix for each of these different numbers in here as the eigenvalue. So say I subtracted two for this first one from all numbers on the diagonal. Well, then I would get one, five, three, one, five, three. No, this was three minus two. And then this was seven minus two. And then eight minus two would be a six here. And I leave everything else alone. And note that if I were to row reduce this, I'd end up with a free variable. Right, this whole column would go, or this whole row right here would go away. I'd end up with a free variable here. So because I have a free variable, that means it has non-zero solutions to the homogeneous matrix. So what that means is that two is in fact an eigenvalue. Uh, so that means this is not my answer, and this is not my answer. What about three? Well, I can test three in the exact same way. All I gotta do is subtract three from all the values on the diagonal, so that makes this a zero, five, three. And then this would be 1, 4, 3. And this would be 1, 2, 5. Do we have any free variables here? I don't think we do. Um, let's see. You can kind of think about this. If this one were up top, I could knock out this row with these values. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's take the 1, 2, 5 and put them up top. And then instead of the 1, 4, 3, I'll do 1, 4, 3 minus the 1, 2, 5. So that'll give me a 0 here and a 2 here and a negative 2 here. And then I got this 0, 5, 3 here. Uh, and what you'll see is I end up with this diagonal matrix. I can knock out this 5 by scaling this appropriately, multiply this by 5, and this by negative 2, maybe an atom. But these guys won't go. These are not in the same ratio that these guys are, so this guy will not go away. What I'm saying is that in 3, I do not end up with a free variable. So I don't even have to go any further. I can tell that's not a solution. So this cannot be the answer, and this cannot be the answer. It looks like I figured out the answer. The answer must be C, right? Two and five only. And the way you can prove that is by figure out what happens with five. Um, we'll go one more step, subtract five from all the entries on the diagonal. So negative two, five, three. And then one, two, three. And then one, two, and then eight minus five is three. And what you'll see here is again, it's fairly obvious that those two guys, I could knock out this whole row with this whole row that would result in a free variable which is equivalent to the statement that I had here, which tells me that I have an eigenvalue. Uh, it worked for two and it worked for five. Uh, so my answer would be C, two and five only. That's a little hard to read. Now it's only worse, but I'm gonna call that good.